Hello everyone and welcome to Whiskey Wednesday. We're finally getting to review it, it's back. Uh, the Glendronach 15 Revival, been re-revived Revival again, uh, but this time under Rachel Barry. Now the old bottling, which went away four years ago, uh, it was much older than 15 years old. Still have some of it left at home, so we pro we'll probably do like a live stream comparing the two side by side, but I bought a new bottle. Um, it's the same price pretty much everywhere in the UK, it's about £62 a bottle and it's a combination of Oloroso and Pedro Jimenez sherry casks, uh, 15 years old as a minimum, 46%, natural colour, no filtering, all that fun stuff that we all really enjoy. But the key thing is, it'd be quite awful and not very fair to compare it to the old one, because the old one was significantly older and the casks were kind of like, most of them were from the early 1990s. So that's how old it actually was, when, even when it was kicking around in like 2013, 2014. So I'm not going to compare it to the old one, I'm just going to compare it on its own right, on its own merit. Does it stand up to other big sherry cask whiskies in the current market? Um, I personally think it does, but we'll tell you why. So Rachel's taken over, she's pretty much kept the recipe in terms of the percentage and the colouring and the filtration, pretty much the same, but she's picked her own barrel selection. Um, I don't know if her and Billy have different tastes when it comes to sherry, we'll have to get them on and ask them someday, which would be pretty cool. Uh, but let's dive in and let's see what's going on with the nose of the new Glendronic 15. Uh, to me, and I did retry some of the old 15 just a couple of days ago, it seems brighter, which I know is, is a strange word to use, but the old ones, you know, they were dark and dank and heavy because they were more like 18 year old whiskey. But this to me, it smells fresher and lighter and cleaner as a word altogether. So brighter, fresh, light and clean. There's some like classic sherry notes of like, you know, Raisin and Sultana. Um, but in terms of like some more unusual ones, <clears throat> there's almost like a, like a glacé cherry kind of note, like a, a cherry liqueur kind of note to it. Nice bit of spice on the nose too. I don't think that's coming from ABV. I think that's just from like kind of, it's like a natural kind of spiciness it has. And there's a wonderful top note um, of kind of like, like Jamaican ginger cake and like uh, hot cross buns and like kind of, kind of like sticky, like glazed pastries. Brown sugar as well. It's sweet, to say the least. Um, you know, Oloroso is off dry, Pedro Jimenez is remarkably sweet. Um, the PX seems to be kicking through a little bit more. And there's a little bit of funk kind of hidden in the back of it, which makes me think maybe some of it's European oak, or maybe quite a large percentage of it's European oak rather than American oak. But yeah, sweet, clean, bright, very fresh, um, which aren't the usual tasting notes, or smelling notes, I should say, for a sherry cask whiskey. Well, let's taste it and see if it matches up to the nose. It instantly reminds me of cherries and strawberries, but like those kind of like Harry Bow cherry sweets and those like strawberry lip sweets you get you used to get as a kid still get them now but it reminds me quite a lot of those we'll go back to the taste in a minute but what i do I want to talk about directly is the finish and just backing up that thing i mentioned about european oak there is a dryness to it there is an astringency to it but it's pleasant and it's kind of welcome and quite warming and very comfortable um it's like you know tannins aren't necessarily a bad thing all the time i think this one's actually quite welcoming and quite warm it's a beautifully kind of fizzy, light, tannic, peppery finish. Um, but in terms of the taste, going back to that kind of strawberry and cherry note. The sugars that we picked up on the nose are becoming like a bit more burn and a bit more intense, like brown sugars. Let's turn into like caramel and golden syrup. Um, I get like apricot, like apricot and kind of like dried fruits is running around the back somewhere. 
like dried stone for like mangoes and peaches. Not that more raisiny sultana vibe you normally get. But that finish is wonderful. Like it's just peppery enough, it's just spicy enough, it's just giving you enough to kind of warrant the contrast of the sweetness. So like, I applaud Rachel again for this because this is the third, maybe even the fourth whiskey this year that we've talked about that she has kind of put together. Uh, I think it's the third. Uh, but you know, just seriously well done because the balance is exceptional. Uh, I think overall in terms of the score, it's, it's, it's as good as some of the whiskies we tried previously. So I'm going to roll with like, again, an eight. I think for 60 pounds a bottle at 15 years old, it's, I can't think of other things that beat it in terms of the flavor and the depth. Uh, you know, Glenlivet 15 is a bit cheaper, but I would prefer this over it. Um, Abalore 15 or 16, if you can still get it, is kind of interesting, but I would again, take this over it. Um, Downmore 15, this walks all over Downmore 15, in my opinion. Um, I think it's a really solid eight. Like I still think the 18 is a little bit better, but this is exceptional value for a whiskey that still carries Glendronach's trademark big sherry notes to it. Uh, so thank you, Rachel. Thank you all for watching. This is Glendronach 15, the new one. Uh, I'm Phil. This is the Whiskey Shop in Manchester, and we will see you all next week. Cheers.